Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to finish my sister's drawing based off her rough sketch. I did a video like this a while back and it was a lot of fun. I asked my sister Reagan if she would like to do this again and she thought it sounded like fun. So she came up with an idea for a picture and then drew it out as fast as she could. Here's what she drew and I have to try to figure out what everything is. But before we do, I want to mention that this video is sponsored by a new tutorial on Wing Fox. It's called Illustration with iPad, the gift from Mr. Snowman. This tutorial is taught by Kuna Tata. Kuna Tata is a Weibo certified design aesthetics blogger and a senior illustrator in Grace G. In this course, Kuna Tata will use the iPad software Procreate to create an illustration with a fairy tale atmosphere. You will learn about many things like composition, how to compose and draft characters, and how to create light, shadow, and details. I love Kunatata's style, it's so whimsical. I love her use of color, lighting, texture, and detail. It all comes together to make really amazing illustration. This huge 13 lesson, 6.5 hour course is updated on a weekly basis and is currently available at the discounted price of only $19. Once it is fully released, it will jump up to a real price of $49. However, you can use this code to get this course for only $1. That's basically free. With all of the content you get and all the stuff you learn, it's a really great deal. If you want to try out this course for yourself, there's a link in the description and don't forget to use the code. Thank you so much to Winkbox for sponsoring this video. So here is Reagan's really rough drawing. I'm going to start by figuring out what I see in this picture exactly. So first I see a girl holding an umbrella. I think her hair is in a half up, half down kind of hairstyle. I kind of see a little pigtail looking kind of thing. And for her clothes, maybe she's wearing some kind of overall or skirt overall kind of thing. Her feet look kind of chunky, so she's probably wearing rain boots, and I think all of the random lines kind of represent rain maybe. I'm not totally sure. For the background, I was kind of confused because this thing that looks like an animal looks kind of high up and doesn't seem to be on the ground like it's on a different plane. Well, I think we have some sidewalk and then there is a small wall that the animal is on. Also, I have no idea what these lines are. I'm going to say a tree maybe. For the animal, I thought maybe it was a dog because this kind of looks like a fluffy tail. This area really confused me. Also, I don't know what this squiggly line is. I'm going to say a pine tree. Ah, uh, so now that I have an idea of what I see in the scribbles, I'm going to get more of an idea of what I'm going to draw. So I start drawing in the girl a little more. Like I mentioned, I thought she was wearing an overall dress skirt kind of thing and some rain boots. For the dog, I thought maybe it was a Pomeranian because my sister kind of likes Pomeranians. Uh, maybe the girl is walking her dog in the rain and it's standing on the wall for some reason. But I don't know, that just didn't feel right. Plus I stink at drawing dogs. So I looked at the sketch again and this time I saw a cat that is turning its head to look at the girl. And I think the cat is following the girl so that it doesn't get wet from the rain. So it's kind of sticking close and staying under her umbrella. And I thought this made a lot more sense so I went with it. It felt weird to have the girl just kind of ignoring the cat and just looking straight forward. And when I looked at the sketch again, it kind of looked like the head was maybe turned. So I turned the girl's head to look at the cat. I feel like with this sketch, you can kind of just see whatever you want or what you're looking for. <laughs> um, but hopefully I'm interpreting it correctly. Once I had more of an idea of what I was going to draw, I did my rough sketch and now I'm working on my cleanup sketch. My sister tends to draw cute characters that are kind of in their younger teens, so I tried to make this character look cute and young. Oh, also I noticed that in the sketch the character had these cuff looking things, so instead of overalls, I think the character is wearing a raincoat, which makes sense because I'm pretty sure it's raining. In the first video where my sister and I did this, the result wasn't the same like at all. Our pictures were totally different. My character ended up being in a totally different position and I somehow got a magical girl male person, whereas my sister had a girl with floating bows. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if I'm close for guessing what it is this time or if I'm completely off. Oh, also on my Patreon Discord server, I posted my sister's sketch and asked my patrons if they would like to participate in this and try to interpret my sister's sketch by drawing their own version. I'll be showing their drawings towards the end of this video. 
For the rain boots, I decided to grab a reference from Google because I apparently can't remember what rain boots look like. <laughs> I'm really glad I did look at a reference though because it did make the boots a lot more interesting and have more detail. Like I was going to make them completely flat on the bottom, but then I noticed they actually have this little bumpy texture. I wouldn't have added that if it wasn't for the reference. It always amuses me that I think I know what things look like. But then I look at a reference and learn that I don't know what the thing looks like at all. <laughs> uh, so use references, they are very helpful. Speaking of references, I used a 3D model to help me sketch out the umbrella. There is no way I would have been able to draw the inside of an umbrella without some help. Umbrellas are really confusing. I was kind of wondering if I wanted to make the umbrella a clear umbrella, but I figured Reagan wouldn't make the umbrella clear, so I decided not to. And now it's time for the cat. Oh my. <laughs> when it comes to animals, cats are the ones I have drawn the most, but I have not drawn one recently, so I was feeling kind of nervous about this. But as I was drawing the cat, I was starting to make it look less hideous. I decided to stylize the face quite a lot and make it a little bit more cartoony. I made the eyes more human-like and gave it little eyebrows. It's not super realistic, but I think it looks cute, so I'm pleased. For the rest of the body, I was trying my best to make it look fluffy. Uh, a lot of times I draw really short haired cats, but I wanted this one to maybe have a little bit longer fur. The paws gave me some trouble. I wasn't sure how much I wanted to define the feet. A lot of times in anime and cartoons, they look kind of small and pretty stylized and they don't go into much detail, but I wasn't sure how much I wanted to stylize them. Also, I decided to bend the front leg just to make things a little bit more interesting and give the cat a little bit more life and movement. I really need to get back into drawing animals more often. I always admire artists that can draw really cute animals in many different positions, and it's something I want to be able to do. So after finishing my cleanup sketch, I move on to the line art. I am showing you the footage that Clip Studio Paint captured, that way you can watch the line art without me turning the canvas a whole bunch. Oh, also, I have something kind of fun I want to mention. For the $5 tier over on Patreon, I will now send the patrons in that tier a personalized birthday card during their birthday month. So yeah, I'm excited to wish my patrons a happy birthday if your birthday is in September and you want me to send you a birthday card. There's a link to my Patreon page with more information. So after finishing the line art, I needed to fill in the base colors. My sister gave me these colors that she chose, that way we have the same color palette. She said that the colors she gave me weren't exact and that they may get darker, lighter, or more saturated um, because when she gave me the colors, she hadn't completely finished her picture yet, so the colors might slightly change. Uh, but these are the general colors she was using. So I decided to make the coats umbrella and boots yellow because that's kind of the standard color for those things. I made the brick wall this brick color. This gives me hope that there is a brick wall in Reagan's picture since she has this brick color. I made the sidewalk and street gray. I did a mixture of pink and blue for her outfit, but I changed this later on and I made her hair brown. I decided to make the cat black for now. <laughs> Earlier, I did a rough painting idea of what I was going to make the background be, and now I'm going over it again with colors that my sister gave me. I'm cleaning things up. I'm painting things like the trees and the bushes on different layers, so it makes things easier for me to shade later on. Honestly, I could not tell what the background was supposed to be like at all. I'm really winging it. Her background just kind of had a bunch of squiggly lines and she said she knew what the lines meant, but I couldn't tell what they were at all. I'm interested to see what my sister's picture is. After getting all the colors in place, I can now move on to shading. Shading this picture was actually kind of tricky. Because it is rainy and overcast, this makes it so that there isn't a very direct or strong light source. This makes the shadows very soft and kind of muted. I'm used to working with pretty direct light sources or just having some kind of light source. So it was kind of odd not having one. Um, but one part I did really enjoy was shading the rain boots, coat, and umbrella. I had a lot of fun making them look wet and shiny. We all know how much I like shading shiny things. <laughs> it's always fun because I get to add a lot of contrast between dark and light colors. I also get to add harder highlights that don't have a soft edge to them and just make things look super shiny. Shading these objects was fun but also very time consuming. I spent a really long time shading the jacket. 
While shading it, I kept thinking how I was very thankful that I did that leather jacket study in that video where I redraw my brother's art. This Rinko was pretty similar to the leather jacket in a way, so I was able to apply a lot of the same techniques. She is under an umbrella, so you might be wondering why I made her coat look kind of wet. Well, maybe she went outside before opening her umbrella, so for a few seconds, she was in the rain. It wasn't enough to soak her, but it did get her coat kind of wet. Uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it <laughs> because I really wanted to make the coat look shiny. Now it's time for the hair and I kind of had no idea what I was doing. Sometimes when I color hair, I know exactly how I want to shade it. And other times I just can't decide so I keep changing things, adding things, and just experimenting until it pleases me. I think what was throwing me off a bit is not having a strong light source. I often rely on that when deciding how to shade the hair and place highlights. But I don't have that so I just kind of felt lost. Um, so yeah. I'm not sure what else to say about the hair. Uh, so how about I tell you a random story? So I walk into the kitchen and my little brother Joel is looking out the window into our backyard. I wondered why and he tells me that he was practicing shooting his bow and arrow in the backyard when a weird squirrel came up behind him and started yelling at him. The squirrel wasn't scared of Joel which kind of weirded him out so he went inside. So Joel and I are looking out the window into the backyard watching the squirrel yell while standing on a low tree branch. It also kept flapping its tail all around and just kept going eh, 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 eh. <laughs> My siblings still wanted to play outside. Um, Ruby was also outside. So I went out to try to scare it away. I walk out the door, stick my arms in the air, and start making a bunch of weird noises like Ah! Shoo! Go away! Ah! The squirrel kind of just looked at me like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> And it kind of just eventually left. It didn't act scared of me. It was just like, fine, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe it was a mama that had babies in that tree because it didn't leave that tree. It just kind of went back into the tree. And as it was walking away, it still kept yelling at us. So I'm assuming it didn't like that we were in its territory. Uh, so yeah, I had to go shoo away a squirrel because it was yelling at my brother. <laughs> After this, I googled why do squirrels yell and shake their tails, and I guess it's to alert other squirrels of danger or something bad, uh, so maybe they thought my brother was dangerous or something. Speaking of animals, I'm now working on the cat. I kept the shading pretty simple. I went over the cat with a dark color and then erased where I didn't want the shadows to be. I then added its little whiskers. To give a slight texture to the fur, I used a lighter color and added little strokes to different areas. I didn't want to go into too much detail with the fur because I thought it might be distracting or a bit out of place, so I kept it pretty simple. I made the cat's eyes yellow, mostly because I think yellow eyes are really cool and I thought it'd help the cat kind of stand out. Like I mentioned earlier, the cat is black for now. I like black cats, I always think they look really cool. But later on, my colors by the cat start to get really dark and the cat starts to blend into the background. So I change it to a lighter gray cat later on. Now that the character and cat are close to being done, I move on to the background. I'm starting by adding more detail to the brick wall. One part I often forget about when it comes to brick walls is the lines of cement. Is it cement? I don't know, whatever the stuff in between the bricks are. <laughs> Anyways, I forget about this stuff in between the bricks, so I wanted to make sure to add it this time. When you look at bricks, they often aren't super perfect. So when adding the lines, I purposely tried to make them look a little bit wobbly and uneven. Also, to help the bricks look less flat, I added a little ridge to the edges of them with a darker color. After working on the bricks for a while, I decided to start working on the bushes. And I had no idea how I wanted to render these. Do I want to go simple? Do I want to go more detailed? I didn't know what to do. I kept trying different foliage brushes, but that wasn't really working. So I took the thin gouache brush and started to make a bunch of leaf-like shapes in a ton of different colors. This part was actually pretty fun. It was almost like painting a cloud, uh, but not a cloud. I kind of had to figure out the shape and where I wanted the lighter and darker colors to be. 
I also got to use a bunch of different shades of green. I tried to use more darker greens and bluey greens and greeny greens. <laughs> Once I got the basic idea in place, I did find a leaf brush, but instead of dragging it around and just drawing all over the bush, I would tap my pen on the screen so it would just place one little batch of leaves at a time. I added a lot of leaves around the edges to help the bush look leafier. Like with the thin gouache brush, I'm using a bunch of different colors to give the bush form and variety. I honestly didn't really know what I was doing. I kind of just kept going until I felt like they looked okay. I kept joking with my sister that I was kind of hoping that I would get to work on a more simple piece this week. <laughs> uh, but then she decided to go with a full body character, an animal, and a background. I spent about seven hours on this illustration. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't quick and easy like I was kind of hoping for. <laughs> uh, but I got to try a lot of new things, so that was really fun. For the rain, I'm just using a provided rain texture from Clip Studio because I didn't feel like drawing a whole bunch of raindrops. I combined the lighter rain and heavy rain textures to kind of make it my own and look how I want. I slightly erased the rain texture around the character and the cat so we can still easily see them. Also, here's where I turn the cat gray so we can actually see the cat. I just used an adjustment layer to change the color of the cat. Lastly, to help our eyes focus more on the character and cat, I'm going to blur out the background a bit. I make a version of my illustration of all the layers merged and then copy it. I blur the copy and then erase where I don't want the blur. This will make the background feel a little less busy and make us look more at the characters. Okay, now that my picture is finished, we are going to take a look at my sister's picture and see if I ended up with a picture close to hers. Okay, so now I'm here with Regan. Hello. And we are going to take a look at her picture. Uh, so let's see what it is. Oh. It's actually really, really <laughs> similar. <laughs> I got super close this time. Oh, you even did the color on the boots. Uh, you did more blue. What What was the pink for? I forgot, I forgot to put it in the ears. Oh, wait, where was the pink supposed to go? In the cat's ears. I oh. I forgot to put it. I guess you can add that if you want. I don't think I put pink in my cat's ears either. I even got the hairstyle pretty close. Mm -hmm. I only did the same eye color. The colors were very similar. One thing about having it be really similar as you're working it, me working on it was like a little more nervous seeing, <laughs> nerve wracking, I guess, because like it was very similar. Yeah, they're very comparable. Uh, thank you for drawing the picture for me. You're welcome. It was a lot of fun comparing them and seeing if I could get something similar. And it's a lot similar than last time. Mm -hmm, a lot more similar. <laughs> uh, so I think we did good. Yeah. Yay! Also, here are the pictures my patrons made based on Regan's sketch. Thank you all so much for sharing your art and participating. It's so much fun seeing what everyone saw in Regan's sketch. Well, that is all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!